31 years old. I'm a fanatical surfer and I also like to shape my own surfboards. I'm always sort of thinking, what, what can I do next? I've got a beautiful wife, I've got beautiful kids, I've built a couple of houses, I've got a few investments on the go and you've just got to keep active. I tend to always want to have the final say. I don't like losing a battle of argument or confrontation and frankly I can't remember the last time I did lose one. Well, I wasn't expecting gifts. I must thank you for this. Another cup, because we're just about to have a cuppa. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. <laughs> Jeez, you've stepped up. You've got your own merch now. Yeah, mate, yeah. That's cool. Look at that. So that's the original. Uh, I actually had to buy that from Dreamworld. They didn't give it to us. Oh, no, they didn't what? give it to us. Had to buy it. And uh, now I've got that. So wow. you're more generous than them, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, here's an old photo. We've spotted Mike Goldman and a couple. Goldfinger here on the left. He came down actually and stayed here for um for a, it was actually a, uh, it was called a celebrity surf off, and we're raising money for Royal Children's Family. You got Chris Hemsworth here. Oh yeah. Jim Owen. That's Nick Barker from Nick Barker and the Reptiles. This is uh, Glenn Robbins. Yeah. Little Chicken. Wow. Um, Pete's. What was his name? He was uh, from Stingers. Oh. Um, Not Peter Phelps. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Is that him? No, he's had the sister who was the politician. Phelps, he? Is that... How are you going? Hello, Hillary. Glad <laughs> to be with you. I can't believe you've driven this far to see me. I'm down in a little corner of Victoria on the coast. You're in a beautiful part of Victoria, mate. Bell's Beach. Bell's you know, it's Beach, the first yeah. time I've ever been here. Really? Yeah. What's, your, what's your initial thought? Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Yeah, it's good. We get four seasons just about every day. I know there's no way in the world I'd be able to afford to live here. Uh, I'd like <laughs> to go surfing and take you surfing, but it's blowing its tits off out yeah. there. So. Absolutely shocking yeah. weather today. Mm. And I and I didn't, didn't I say to you before I came here, I said I've got a, I've got a funny feeling about the weather on the day. Yeah. Very different back when I was in the show, um, 2004 and 3 and 1, all those original early format series. It was it was a, a much different test to the housemate compared to what it is now. I suppose now there's a lot more game playing and um, telling people and uh, what you think of them. Uh, yeah, people are savvy, they come on and do that now, whereas in our years, in the early 2000s, yeah, well, you couldn't talk about nominations. That was against the rules. So it's so different now. You know, it's like such a survivor format now, isn't it? Alliances back then, you just need to work out how the hell you're going to stay in there for a potential three months. And for my sake, it was three months. And the biggest trouble I had 
personally was just about the two, three week mark of boredom. And that's, that's how they get the best and worst out of you though. You know, you sit around with 15 strangers for in a house in a backyard that's not much bigger than this place. And um, you get to know them pretty quick and likes and dislikes. Yeah, a lot of people actually said that, like on TV, that the place looks massive, like it's mm. so huge. But actually the house itself and the backyard is quite small. That's right. And yeah. that's why you see us doing crazy exercises like walking around the backyard, jumping in the pool. Because if you're active like me and you take, you know, the 5K runs out in the surfs, how was it going to stay fit? So obviously they gave us a gym. We we're happy with that. We could flex our muscles in the gym and all that and do, do workouts. But me and Kane and... Um, a few of the others started running around the backyard and I pulled up sore because I was running around in bloody circles for about three hours. So I pulled up sore on one side of the knee because you're not meant to run like that. But yeah, but it is, it's quite tight in there. Yep. Bloody great question. Well, to, be, to be honest, I didn't have any really negative experiences in the house. I It was an absolute ball for me. You gotta remember, I was the first dad in there, so I came from a pretty busy house anyway. Um, I was, well, I said I was young, I was 30 at the time, 31, but I had two young children and, and my wife and all that. So it was, it was pretty, it was pretty bloody overwhelming to just go in there, you know, and then mix all of a sudden with, like Ash had been straight out of high school. She'd just done year 12 and I was yeah. 31 and I, you know, I had a two-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son, so it was really different for me. So I suppose that was challenging to move into a house full of strangers, and that had its problems. We had to work out the pecking order pretty quickly, <laughs> you know. And that's and that when you start cooking and you had to all cook for each other and clean for each other, and the pecking order sorts itself out pretty quick because there's a heap of lazy bastards, yeah, and yeah. then you've got the people that want to cook for everyone and 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 that are just. I suppose they're, they're domesticated, and I was one of those. I spent a lot of time in the kitchen with, you know, with Kat, Katrina. Yeah. She was a mother of yeah. the home. So, yeah, put a couple of parents in for my year. So that was that was really cool, because they got fa more families involved in watching the show, I think, with their kids. Um, and I look, I'm not gonna say a negative thing, because I haven't, got, I haven't got a negative experience to come out of 2004, to tell you the truth. That's awesome. And I was- That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I, I still keep in contact with a handful of housemates. Um, mainly it's the ones that are interested in the things that I am. So, for example, me and Fitzy were great mates in the house, but we don't ring up each other and we're not chatting on social media anymore. We did that for a while, but for example, I was in Geelong just last year at the Foo Fighters concert and I ran into Fitzy. Yeah. And we were just like... Seen that on uh, hugging. Instagram. I, I was crying because I hadn't seen him for... Probably 10, 15 yeah. years. I saw him at a radio awards night one time, but <laughs> hadn't seen him for a long time. But when you bump into these dudes now and everyone's grey, you just think, shit, you know? The boys flies. are back in town. Yeah. <laughs> so I still mates with Kane. Kane is little Fritter on yep. uh, on Instagram. He's a big DJ now. He's best mates Ooh. with Fisher. Okay. So Kane's going really well there on the Gold Coast. I still talk to Brie Um Socially, occasionally I'll talk to Ashley and just some of the girls through the, you know, just through the messages yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Beautiful. But because we're all spread out, we don't really see each other anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we're still keeping contact. I think someone's going to organise a 20 year reunion for our show. Oh, beautiful. In two years time. Oh, I think it's just going to be, because it was 18 years ago, 04, wasn't it? What is it now? 22. Yeah. Yeah, so they want to get a shuffle on. That'd be that'd be this that'd be next season. This season. Yeah, but up. when I say a reunion, not TV, a private one. Oh yeah, yeah. Right I think right. Bree or someone mentioned that you know our series. Someone wants to try and organise something where we can all go and have a few stubbies together and nice. talk about life and life after BB. Well, hopefully we'll get some footage out of that at some yeah. stage. Well, there's a lot of kids <laughs> now. Like... Just about all of us have got children. Yeah. You know, I had children when I went in, but Bree's got a couple of kids. Fitzy's got kids. Trevor's got kids. <laughs> We're all... They need to bring out a big brother daddy's. <laughs> Aussie Chicken Dale put his hand up. <laughs> Do 
Turned me into a bit of a drinker. Oh, okay. Didn't drink much alcohol before Big Brother. <laughs> now, I'm not blaming Big Brother for this because I am responsible for what goes in my mouth. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Co uh, what are you laughing at, Cheeky? Coffee at the moment. Um, but, no, yeah, drank a fair bit there for about a decade. Had to pull myself into line there. Um, didn't really change me. Didn't really change me. Um, I had a bloody ball in there though. I, it was. A, I think it took a toll in terms of you think about it a lot when you when you when you're involved with something pretty big like that. It was a big event, and um, yeah, millions of people used to tune into our rot every night. So it's um you do think about that a bit. You know what I mean? Sometimes you want it back, and other times you don't. You just want to lead, lead the quieter life. Like I got into radio with like Fitzy and all that. Mm. for about six years um but after doing that just waking up geelong every morning yeah after after the f about five years of that then the novelty wore off and right. there's something to be said about a quieter life as well do you right. know what i mean yeah like, yeah when you come out of big brother you get you get pretty noticed pretty quickly oh yeah <laughs> so it's pretty that. overwhelming and i i remember listening to reggie say how different it is because she was lucky enough to go in there last year again uh, how different it is between then and now. Like, yeah. you know, well, we had security at, when we came out. Yeah, right. The family had security for a yeah. couple of days. They don't get anything now, do nah, they? It's nothing. No, nothing. It's just, yeah, I know what you get now. About 50,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> That's what yeah. you get in return for Big Brother now. <laughs> no car, no million bucks. But, but you, you get Insta famous. Do you <laughs> think that that might have had something to do with COVID? Because people weren't able to just freely walk, wander around there. It might be different for the current housemate or maybe because it's no longer live and yeah. so there is no live evictions and stuff like that yeah. happening it's hard it's hard to know it's which, which uh, on that topic which one do you think is the best live or the way they're doing the format they're doing now oh i i much prefer the live format the one that i was in because it just it, you just can't manipulate anything that way. And I'm not suggesting producers manipulate because they never did in my series. They showed what was real about all of us. A fair snapshot, I'd, I'd say, on each house, mate. But, um, yeah, the live format, it's, it's unforgiving because if you fuck up, you can't go and beg the producers to rewind it and take it out because yeah. it's already gone to air. So, yeah. you know, like when me and Merlin had our big blue, about politics and stuff um yeah we couldn't rewind that whereas if you do something now on today's television and it doesn't pass the pub test yeah then the, the networks probably won't air it because yeah. they can get into trouble and they can lose sponsors so it's just a hell of a lot more safer now and yeah. i don't like safe yeah i was actually talking to mike goldman mm. um regarding the live and he said to me hillary you know not a lot of actually, probably 10, 15 minutes of actual live air time is actually what we got to see on the on the shows. Yeah. Most of what we actually seen was reruns of what had already occurred. Yep. And then you went kind of straight into, well, if it, if it was like the weekend on the Sunday night with the live eviction, yeah. you kind of had like just reruns of what had happened that week. Yeah. And then it goes straight into live eviction. And the most time that we actually seen live was during the live eviction. True. You went, let me get straight. So you, because you were a pastor before you went into the house. Yes. So, yeah. And so then when you came out of the Big Brother house, you went straight into radio. No, I didn't. It took me two years to get the job. Did it really? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I, I came out and I got friendly with one of the fellas uh, that was on air in K-Rock because he was doing my interviews and stuff while I, when I got out of the show. Sure. And he was interviewing my wife and brothers and all that when right. I was in there yeah, yeah. for local content on the radio. So I, I, I got friendly with him and then started doing surf reports for the radio station. Okay. Just as a bit of a contra deal, they'd plug my Winky Pop brand and I'd give them a surf report. Yeah. And, um, and then I, I, I tried for the job uh, as a breakfast radio announcer on trial and um, got it. And but that was two years after Big Brother, so I started that in about two thousand six. Right. And did about five and a half, six years. Okay. And then went back into the trade and got back onto the real money again. <laughs> yeah, trade, tradies earn pretty good money in Victoria, whereas 
breakfast radio announcers to earn that same sort of money. You've got you've got to be in a in a big city, right? Or something like that. Yeah, and kind of full time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I I became full time in there on the radio, but yeah, you know, starting at five in the morning, getting home about lunch lunch time. So that was enough. But you knackered because you're getting up at four every morning. Yeah. So that was a pretty hard job, but. Not as physical as the one I'm doing now, but radio announcing is quite is quite hard on the head because you right. just can't stop thinking. Oh no, that's it. You, you and mm. you're not allowed to have any dead time, like no, no dead air time. No. So you've got to always be filling those gaps. Something. <laughs> and the other the other hard thing about radio is the good thing is you can be yourself, so you're not acting. But you have plenty of shit days. Everyone wakes up and has a bad day, and you can't. You can't then you can't put over. that out on air because no yeah. one wants to wake up and listen to a couple of blokes on the radio telling you that their lives are pretty shit, <laughs> uh, or you know they're bored today, or they've got a headache. You don't, they, they don't, they don't want to hear it. They want to laugh and they want entertainment. So you, that was quite challenging. Yeah, and, and, and tiring, tiring because when you feel like shit, you don't want to talk it up and pretend you you, you know you, you're okay if you if you're not okay, but. Yeah, that was that was the radio. I, I did enjoy it. It was a good gig. Right. So I heard a little work, little little birdie. Yeah. Little yeah. birdie. What did little birdie, birdie tell me? Hope it wasn't a Twitter birdie. It might have been. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, that you were running for mayor of Torquay. Well, that's abs- well, Torquay. Is it Torquay or Torquay? Torquay. Torquay. So you're running for a mayor. Nah, that's wrong. That's <laughs> wrong. I I was going to... No, I ran as a candidate to be a councillor, which then you could have become mayor. Mayor? I didn't even get that far. I pulled really? out. I pulled out. Why'd you pull out? Because of my political... Views? Views. I lean towards the right. <laughs> so this shire where I live... A pretty left and okay. green, right? And I am not. So, a as soon as I announce my time to be a candidate in the Surf Coast Shire, the hate mail and the threats started wow. pouring into my Facebook. <gasps> they set up um, this green, like uh, when, when I say green, this lady that worked for the Greens. I won't mention her name. She set up a hate campaign against me. Wow. Called me racist, all off the back of the fight with Big Brother, uh, with Merlin on Big Brother. She called me racist. She called me a climate change denier, which I'm not a denier, I'm skeptical. I just have views on how the climate is changing. Yeah. That's all. So I, um, I was surfing bells one day and I was talking to a few blokes who I respected out in the water and they said to me, Chicken, what are you fucking doing? I said, what do you mean? And they said, what are you running for the council for? That's not you. you you'll go fucking tropo. You, it's, you're not f- fit for suits and boardroom meetings. I said, yeah, but I can represent the people and all that. And then I had a good think about it. And yeah, I, I, I took his advice. And I, I was making, I was stepping into a bear trap, I think. Yeah. And you can care for the community and want to do something to make change. But the problem is politicians just get smacked by keyboard warriors and and i I even got death threats wow for running for fucking cancel god so i just thought no i don't need that in my life and um just did a quick exit yeah Uh, people a few people said oh because chickens backflipped you know it was on the front page of the local paper and all that stuff but i can wear that like we all everyone makes mistakes and when you can avoid one it's even better yeah No, no, if I, if I could get back in that show, and I did have a crack last year when Trevor and that got back in. I did speak to producers, but don't know. They didn't want my style, so yeah, I didn't get the opportunity. But if I went back in, I'd be pretty much the same person as I was. I haven't changed much, but I'm 20 years more wise. I have a phone now and I can type. <laughs> I can make my own TikTok videos, because back in the day, Big Brother, I remember they gave me a... Uh, a laptop and I, I, I couldn't even type. I sat in there like this do, 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 and then Big Brother was going, Paul, you might want to save what you've done because I'd been in there for about an hour and I'd written one paragraph. <laughs> I was so bad on this sort of stuff that get better now. So I've learned a bit. So yeah. I'd go in there a smarter man, older man, 
um, if I if I got the opportunity again. Yep, beautiful. Did you want to give her a plug? Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell everyone all about your daughter. Yeah, Lexi Dyer's my daughter. She's a bit of a star on TikTok. Uh, her and her girlfriend are. Um, don't ask me what they do. You'd have to jump on and actually have a look. No, I know what they do because they've actually set an account up for me. I'm Aussie Chicken Dad on TikTok and going all right on it too. It's a bit of fun. Yeah. It's a bit of fun. I incorporate my sort of shenanigans, family life. Um, it's usually quite vulgar. A lot of swearing and a lot of stuff like that. But there seems to be a fan base out there. My daughter's got about 100 and... 13,000 followers or something wow. like that. Yeah. And what's your TikTok name? Lexi Dyer. Lexi Dyer. Yeah. Okay, so I have Lexi to look Dyer. her up. Yeah. And, um, and you're on Instagram? Instagram and TikTok, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My, um, I just go under my name, Paul Chicken Dyer, and yeah. um, the TikTok's the Aussie Chicken Dad. And did you want to give your business a plug? Nah. Oh, this one? Winky Pop. And that's my uh, pride and joy. That's my Winky Pop t-shirts hoodies and surfboards i do that as a hobby stroke small business beautiful yeah so you got your own merch yep oh lovely yeah beautiful would I you like I'm... to follow me and have a quick look let's do that go we can do that for sure and i'll show you something else so this is my little show room i've got my i've got my advertising here Sometimes people uh, inbox me on the Instagram. They say, "How do I get a Winky Pop tea?" And I say, uh, "Come to my house, or I can post them." Yeah. So not... Have you got a light in here, Dar? Oh, so I it's have, a little yeah. bit dark. There That's we go. That, yeah. Beautiful. So here, I've just got that sort of stuff. I've got. Um, we came up with all the designs ourselves. I drew that one. My next door neighbour drew that one, uh, and that's actually the Winky Pop safety beacon sign ADW. Yep. Hang on. So how much how much do these cost you? About forty bucks. About forty bucks one of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and the windshield is of 50, 60 bucks. Beautiful. And what is Winky Pop, Paul? You want to Winky Pop's the name of the surf break next to Bell's Beach. Yeah. And um, it's all it's all been trademarked here. The word actually um, is well, it was a code word for sex. Okay. So we used to say it was um, short for fuck, <laughs> but you might want to use the word sex. Next <laughs> okay. Yes. Very nice. What's that photo there? Oh, you've been to Dracula's? Yeah, Brie used to work there. Oh, really? Right. Yeah, Brie Amy used to work at Dracula's, so she took us all there. The, the one in the Melbourne? Bar. Yeah. Oh, what so, a shame that place so closed down, eh? In, in my series, you got Brie there. Yep. Cat, Cat, who was the mother. Yeah. Um, Paul, Mike. Yes, yes. Um, oh, they're all there. Yeah, beautiful. They're all there. Sorry, I just I just spoiled that because I went to that when it was in when it was on in Melbourne, and it was like the best time. What do you want? Do you want to have, 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 have come to my toilet? Oh, I'm looking at your toilet. Oh, <laughs> okay, we're going that. into Paul's come toilet. Into Paul's toilet. <laughs> I used to watch me do this on Big Brother, but now I've got my own little Big Brother here. That's me and Lexi when I got evicted. Yeah, yeah. Me and Trev. I've got Bree here. That's the night. That's the night I came home. Yep. We got chauffeured us home, and that's the night I went on there with Rove. Yep. So I clearly haven't let things go. <laughs> I still need to look at it while I'm having a poo. <laughs> 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 uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> There's a wall there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll show you one more thing. Come yeah, on, here yeah. we go up the stairs. Okay, hang on. Whoop. Get the neighbours. Twelve apostles. Wow, look at that. That's an awesome picture, Paul. I know, it's a beautiful wow. and I do like my memory, so I had to make up some big brother boards. Yeah. This is my favourite. Oh, it's just look like all this. real photos, like not posing photos. It's like that's the night I went in, Gretel's interviewing me. That's me not knowing what the hell I was getting myself into. <laughs> That's from the house on the big screen while she's interviewing me on the eviction night. Oh, there's a bit of a glare. Oh, like, no. Can I get over that side? Oh, no, if, yeah. you, if we just swap Is around. There we go. That's better. Yeah. Here we go. So that's the first night in. Uh, Gretel's uh, introducing me to the world, Australia, and going in, running down the runway. That's, yeah, obviously when I got evicted. Yep. And uh, coming out. 
Of the family there? Yep. Didn't even recognise them. It was three months. They'd all gone. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the, the great night. Because the kids would have been... Oh, no, was your daughter talking when you went in? Just. Just yeah, talking. Yeah, she, was, she was just three. Right, wow. Yeah. Holy moly. So they wouldn't have really even understood what, what Dad was really doing at that age. I had no idea. Yeah, no, yeah, no yeah. No. Do you reckon it would have been harder for them had they have known Paul? That what was going on? Um, well, I sort of had to. I had to. You're right. Yeah, my I had kid. to. Um, I had to kiss my son on the forehead to sort of say, "Look, mate, I'm not going to see you for three months. You'll be able to see me, but I won't see you." And he's just looking at me, going, "What do you mean?" I said, "I'm going to be on the television." <laughs> and um, what a dad, just leaving the wife at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So. That's all. That's all I have to ask you about Big Brother and everything. Paul, is there anything that you would like to um, let the world know? Not really. Nothing. No. No. We we'll just wrap it up. Hang on. We'll do that. Back there we go. Alrighty. So, um, thank you very much, Paul, for spending the time to um, talk to us, me and the Babs, and my pleasure. And share everything. My pleasure. And I've always thought, you know, with the good thing about Big Brother is we can relate to our fans that go on the show because we're only ordinary people. None of us yeah. were none of us went in there because we were actors. They chose us just because we were unique and I think too when they they choose housemates, they they will they'll choose someone for everyone, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. you've got to have your your argumentative types and then your your ones that carry on and you've got to have, you know, straight and gay and yeah. black and white. Well, that's and, the world. And all the, the world different is. and all the yep. different cultures we've got. That's that's Australia. Yep. Somebody representing somebody. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it was a pleasure um, talking to you, Paul. My, Thank you very, very much. My pleasure, Hillary, and thanks for coming all the way down to the southern end of Australia to say good day to good old Paul. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. Okay. Thanks, darling. What do you think the Big Brother secret is? Paul doesn't like to speculate Big Brother on something he doesn't know. But I'm starting to know that Big Brother likes to play good games. And I rate you. So, better be big. But for a stab, it'd be ridiculous. Stab in the dark. Big Brother would like you to take a stab in the dark. That you're my father. And you've put your own son in here. Is that you, Daddy? sitting next to me who is going to make me cry because their tears welling aren't there. <laughs> yeah, I want to see him. He's desperate to see his family and we're saying, no, you can't see them just yet. Because we know that once your family is here, we're going to lose your attention. Massively. And rightly so. Yes. So what I want to say to you just now yep. is that when you went into the house, you proved yourself... Hello, mate. 